Most rivalries wait till rivalry weekend of the college football season. Texas OU, they do it right. We got it in October. The last time as Big 12 opponents, Texas and OU, before they leave for the SEC to break it all down from the Texas side of things, welcoming on inside Texas' very own Bobby Burton. Bobby, how are we feeling that it's the last time these two play as Big 12 opponents? Any sentimental feelings there? I don't think there's any sentimental feelings as it relates to the Big 12. Both teams, I think, are ready to depart the conference uh, based on how the conference commissioner has talked about them both. Uh, and, you know, essentially this this rivalry predates the Big 12 even being in existence. When OU was in the Big 8 and Texas was in the Southwest Conference, these were still the two teams' biggest rivalries. Uh, it's part of the Cotton Bowl tradition at the Texas State Fair each and every October. Um, there's no there's no sentimental value uh, between these two teams. They're just hatred and wanting to get on the field and prove who's best. I saw a tweet earlier that said Brett Yormark should be the one who awards the golden cowboy hat. Thought that was pretty good. I'd love to see that post game, but don't think that's going to happen uh, when it comes to this game, Bobby. What's the matchup that's going to determine the winner? Well, I think Greg Sankey should award the golden ha cowboy hat. How about that? Um, yeah, I, like I think that. That, I think that what it'll depend on is two things. Um, can Texas stop the passing game of uh, Dylan Gabriel, the, the very high level of execution that he has, uh, and get off the field enough times? And then, conversely, Texas running the ball. Uh, they've had a lot of success this year running uh, with Jonathan Brooks having over 200 yards uh, this past week against Kansas on top of 100-yard games back-to-back uh, -back against Wyoming and uh, Baylor. If, if Texas can find a way to run the ball, the Longhorns are going to be a tough out for anybody this year because Quinn Ewers is starting to dial it up a little bit as a, as a passer. And those two things are going to be priority. And it felt like they just leaned on Kansas last week. I know they were balanced throwing for over 300, but to run for over 300. And Jonathan Brooks is averaging 10 yards a carry. I mean, I, I don't know how you beat Texas when they're operating at that level offensively, but you hit on it defensively, Bobby. When it comes to slowing down this pass game of Dylan Gabriel and this wide receiver unit that the Oklahoma has, is it a thing where you try and heat them up and speed up that shot clock? Is it you play a little more conservative? I mean, what, what's the plan of attack in your mind with trying to defend that pass game? Well, I don't think you can – look, I don't think that you can sit back and let Bill, Dylan Gabriel pick you apart because he will, especially not in zone coverage because OU's receivers are, are, are well-schooled. They'll get into the zones. They'll flood a zone. Uh, they'll, they'll run stuff by you if you're in quarters. I, I think that you have to, if I'm not mistaken, I think you have to play a little man and trust your front to stop the run and then play two safeties behind them. Um, and then make Dylan Gabriel beat you down the field where he, he could get in trouble a little bit sometimes. I mean, so uh, all in all, if Texas stops the run, they'll be able to dictate more of how they want to defend the pass. Uh, and if they choose to do that, that that's going to be a good marker for Texas. Now, if Oklahoma can establish the run game, uh, Texas is going to be a long day, long afternoon in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, it seems like a very rhythmic offense. Like Jeff Lovey wants to run and then work up to the intermediate pass game and then eventually get to some shots. So I think we're in lockstep there. Now this spot for Texas, I think, is a little bit interesting because they were on college game day earlier in the year where they were in Tuscaloosa and it was a little bit more of a trendy pick to pick Texas to win that football game. And then they did just that in Tuscaloosa. Now it feels like everyone's talking about Texas as being kind of that top dog, obviously, in this game. I mean, Vegas has them favored by right around a touchdown at the time of us recording this. How? I mean, what's the biggest challenge here for Texas in, in handling a spot like this with, you know, obviously the rivalry game last time in the Big 12? Like, a lot of factors here. What's the challenge in your mind here, Bobby? I don't think – I think Texas has an experienced team. They brought back 10 starters on offense from last year. Uh, they have an, a, a, what I call an adult defense, a lot of juniors and seniors, right? Some uh, grad transfers and portal transfers in that mix as well. I don't think that's the issue. I think really it comes down to focusing on how to beat Oklahoma and executing the best they can. Uh, Texas has a good team. Oklahoma has a much improved team and a good team as well. Uh, and I, I've said this, I, I went to school at Texas, full disclosure. I've been watching this game for 35 years now, 40 years almost. And anybody that tells you they know who's going to win this game before it kicks off is just they, they're just saying things. Uh, it comes down to who's going to win and who's going to want it the most. And that's what's going to matter most on, on Saturday. 
Well, I can't wait. I'm sure y'all y'all do picks on Inside Texas, correct? For the game, I'm sure yes. you'll have a, a full prediction. Okay. Well, y'all, if it, it's it's Red River Week, like get a membership at Inside Texas, get dialed in so you can get Bobby's prediction as well as the rest of the staff over there. Bobby, appreciate you making time. Enjoy the game, and we'll do this again real soon. All right. Have a good one, JD. Thanks for having me. Now, if you liked this video, make sure you get a membership over at Inside Texas. It's going to keep you informed for all things Texas Longhorns. Also make sure you're subscribed right here to the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel.